First of all, after unboxing, check for any physical damages on the device and make sure all the inbox contents are present. After that, press the power key and the setup process will begin. So simply select your language first, then choose your country. After that, you will see a window. Friends, if you have any accessibility need or you are setting up this device for someone with special requirements, then you can choose from these settings here. Although you can set this up later. So for now, select not now. Next, to choose your Wi-Fi network. After that, you will see our data and privacy window. Just click continue. Now comes the migration assist option. If you are already using a Mac, a Windows laptop or a PC, by selecting the appropriate options here, you can copy all your data in this MacBook, especially if you are upgrading from a MacBook. Now sign in to your Apple account. You can always do this later. If you don't have an Apple ID yet, no issues whatsoever. You can easily set it up later. Then simply agree to the terms and conditions. After that, we need to create a Mac user account. This is a separate account from Apple ID. It's just a personal account for Mac. You can easily set this up by naming your Mac and setting a password. But yes, make sure to remember password and password hint especially. Recovering a password on a Mac can be quite difficult. Next, enable location services. If your Mac ever gets lost, of course location and tracking services will help you to find it. So it's really important to enable this. Then comes the option to share analytics with Apple. If you want to help Apple as a brand to improve Mac experience and all, then you can agree to share analytics. But friends, I personally prefer to keep it disabled. Next up is the screen time. It gives you reports on how much time you are spending on Mac and all. You can always set this up later, so just continue for now. Now you will see a pop-up of Siri. Enable it, of course. Who doesn't want a virtual assistant? After enabling Siri, you will be asked to give some voice demo. Just repeat what's coming on the screen. It's nothing but just a better voice understanding for Siri. After that, set up the touch ID by easily placing your finger on sensor. And after that, you can choose theme like dark mode, light mode or auto mode. And with that, the basic setup is complete. Now we have entered in the Mac OS, but now comes the main part. After this basic setup, the first thing you should do is go to settings, then general, then software update. Update your MacBook to the latest version. With this, you can access all the newest features. The OS update will definitely take some time. But after that, your Mac will be fully ready to use. You can adjust the app dock according to your screen size. And if there is any application in dock you don't use frequently then you can remove it easily just click and hold on the app go to option and then select remove from the dock similarly if you want to add any application in the dock go to options and then select add to dock next go to settings then privacy and security at the bottom you will see firewall click on it if your mac ever gets stolen in a normal use case scenario your data will be accessible to thief but if you don't want that you want best possible security for your data then turn this firewall on after turning this on no one will be able to access your data without password or a pass key even service center professionals cannot access your data so it's completely upon you but from my side if you are someone who travels a lot and you want best possible security for your data then definitely you must enable this firewall next we will customize this trackpad again go to settings then trackpad first thing to do is enable tap to click after enabling this you won't need to press the trackpad buttons anymore you can just tap to use it then enable secondary click in macbook so to perform a right click you usually have to tap with two fingers and obviously it feels a bit unusual to make this exactly work like windows click on the secondary click and select a click in bottom right corner this way you can use right and left clicks just like on a windows laptop or a mouse next you can adjust your trackpad and tracking speed as well think of it like a dpi adjustment you can set it according to your movement speed also you can adjust the amount of force needed to click the trackpad just by selecting this i usually keep this set to medium from here you can adjust scrolling zooming and smart zoom by default all of these options are enabled and if you have ever used a windows laptop i recommend keeping these all tabs enabled for natural scrolling but if you want you can toggle them to change the scrolling directions go to settings then keyboard or you can adjust the keyboard response time as well for more of a natural typing experience set the key repeat rate to fast and delay until repeat to normal also enable adjust keyboard brightness in low light and it will automatically adjust the keyboard brightness in dim conditions and friends if battery is your main priority from mac then set the turn off backlit in activity to 30 seconds now we are going to do dock customizations for performing that again go to settings then desktop and dock here you can customize things according to your preferences like adjusting dock size magnification and app animations these are more of personal customizations not any essential settings friends again go to settings in the battery segment you will find our low power mode enable this if you really need the extra battery life no doubt this mode sacrifice performance but it significantly improves the backup as well next go to battery health details here you will see the battery condition since it's a new laptop the maximum capacity will be at 100 percent on older laptops when this percentage drops below 30 percent you will notice a significant difference in performance to prevent this from happening quickly turn on the optimized battery charging after enabling this your mac will learn your charging routine for example you plug in your mac to charge overnight it will charge quickly up to 80 percent then extremely slowly for the remaining 20%. It definitely helps to extend the battery life. In the bottom right corner, you will see options. Click on it, then tap on slightly dim the display on battery and optimize video streaming on battery. Enable both of these settings to improve battery life even further. Now go to settings, then notifications. By default, Mac notifications pop up and take over half the screen. It will definitely interrupt your work. You can either completely disable notifications or customize the alerts which suits your need. Now let's come to display settings. Actually, you don't need to change here much, but here you can adjust the text size for better readability or get 
more space on your display. If you use your Mac both indoor and outdoor frequently, then definitely enable auto brightness. Definitely it's better than manually adjusting brightness frequently. You can also change the color profile of your display. MacBooks or we can say every Apple device comes with true tone display. It's a bit of a yellowish display. Not everyone likes it. And if you're one of those who don't like it, then simply disable it for a cooler color tone. Now here are some important gestures and shortcuts which you need to know before using Mac. To search for any application, press command plus space. This will open a spotlight. It's like a search bar for Mac. To close any application, press command plus W. To switch between open applications, press command plus tab. To minimize an application or a window to the dock, press command plus M. If any application isn't responding or crashes, press command plus option plus escape. It's like Alt F4 in Windows. To take a screenshot or a screen recording, press command plus shift plus 5 for options. To lock the Mac, press command plus L. For a force restart, press control plus command plus power button. Now let's talk about some gesture controls. To switch between application without shortcuts, you can swipe down with three fingers on trackpad. It will open mission control. This will show you all the open applications. To create another desktop workspace, click the plus icon at the top in mission control. This allows you to work in separate desktops without interference. If you want to see all your application displayed on the screen at once, pinch out like this on trackpad with four fingers. All the installed application will pop up here. And from here, you can easily drag applications to the dock and install them or open them. With all the apps displayed, it's quite easy now. Lastly, go to settings, then desktop and dock. Scroll down to the bottom and click on the hot corners. This is a slightly hidden but a super handy feature. You can assign different functions to each corner of your Mac screen. It's a really great feature. Here you can assign frequently used applications or any different task like mission controls. And that's it friends. You have successfully set up your Mac. After tweaking all the essential settings and knowing about all the essential shortcuts gestures, you are ready to use this Mac.